Hi, ghosties. I'm Macy. And I'm Natalie. In this week's episode, we are discussing a few haunted dolls. Ooh, I'm excited. I've said in a previous episode that haunted dolls really freak me out. And I don't have a solid explanation as to why. I just, if you show me like a haunted shelf, I'm like, ooh, spooky. Mm-hmm. A haunted doll, I'm like, ah, no. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is exactly for me. I think it's because they have eyes. You know what? That would make sense. I'm not afraid of them personally. The only other time I've been really uneasy about a doll is at our grandparents' house. They have these two little, like, little old lady and Mm. little old man dolls that sit on a bench. And they're so creepy looking. And I just feel like they're watching me. I can't be in a room alone with them at my grandparents' house. They make me feel a little weird, too. But that's about it. (laughs) Yeah. Nothing actually with hard evidence. Well, today we have a variety of pack of dolls. We've got Okiku the doll, Letta. And the very infamous Robert the doll. And I have a special little treat for you at the end. The end. Okay, you said very infamous, and I was like, ooh, I'm going to know who's Robert. I don't oh, know. People will know. Oh, I'm sure. People I will know. I am constantly learning things here. This whole setup is for me to bring Natalie new teas to try and new haunting stories. Because yes. I am in this world. Natalie yes. is not. She is in the drag queen world, honestly. Yes. <laughs> so she teaches me about um, that world and I teach her about this one. Yes. Our tea today is Celestial Seasonings Cinnamon Apple Spice. <sighs> I'm it so excited. smells delicious. Let's go. I like it. I feel like if I was sick... This would heal me. We had a couple people comment this one too, and I'd already bought it. I'm so excited to try it. So shout out to those few people who commented this. It's really good. So oh, if yeah. you ever come across this, Celestial Seasonings, Cinnamon Apple Spice, really good. I agree. If I were sick, it would heal me. This makes me wish that we lived way up north and it was cold all the time mm-hmm. because I would just be holding this with two hands and like, you know what I'm talking about? I do. <laughs> I pretend like I live there all the time and turn my, like, blast my AC and drink my tea. (laughs) That's a lie. Macy's house is always a crisp 79 degrees. When I'm at home by myself, my husband is like a lizard and needs it especially warm. If it's not warm and humid, he's not happy. And I am just melting and gross. So that is sick. I compromise. I compromise to 73. Could never be me. No, my thermostat does not go above 69. It can't. I'm a sweaty girl. When he's not at home. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways, let's talk about the dolls. Before we get started, I just wanted to let everyone know in case you missed it, we are posting two times a week this month for the month of October. So we posted a tea party episode on Thursday. It's going to be listener stories. And then we'll be posting again this Thursday all the way through Halloween. So if you missed it, you can go back and watch that listener stories. And then we're still posting every Monday. So a little special treat for all of us. I'm very excited because there are tons of emails. Oh, yeah. Tons. And people have DM'd us on Instagram saying, I just sent y'all the scariest story. And I'm like, Macy's going in order. It's going to take so long I know, for us I know. to get to the scary story. And I'm just part like, of oh, me, can't wait. Part of me really wants to continue on with the twice a week. I was going to say, but I didn't want you to be like, no, I'm cutting that. I was going to be like, (laughs) we have enough to where we could like, you know, sprinkle one here and there. We don't have to maybe do it every Thursday, but just when we've got the time. Yeah. So be on the lookout for that. Maybe. 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 We'll see. (laughs) Moving on. On to dolls. Kikuko was just two or three years old when her brother Ikichi Suzuki took a short trip to Sapporo Hokkaido, Japan to visit an exhibit in 1918. She was upset that her beloved brother would be leaving her, even if for just a short time. Though they were nearly 15 years apart in age, her brother was her favorite playmate. Her brother was always there to play with her when he got out of school and loved his sister just as much. So it was no surprise that Ikichi thought of his little sister while on his trip. When he returned home, Kikuko was presented with a beautiful little doll that her brother bought in a shop near the exhibit. It was 40 centimeters tall, dressed in a purple and pink kimono, and had dark eyes and delicate features painted on. Its hair was dark, just like Kikuko's, and rested just below the doll's ears. Kikuko loved her new doll. It became her favorite toy. She took it everywhere for years. It ate dinner with her, slept in her bed with her, and she carried it with her to every outing, to the market, or to visit another family member's house. Just a few years after the purchase of the doll, Kikuko fell ill. Still, the doll remained by her side as her illness took a turn for the worse, and it was there with her as she took her last breath, surrounded by her family that loved her dearly. I didn't know we were getting this dark this soon. When it was time to set little Kikuko's ashes up on the family's altar, they knew that her beloved doll should remain by her side as it was in life. 
So there the doll remained for years as the family prayed for their daughter and other family members that they missed so dearly. Here is where the story differs depending on your source. Some say that in the years following young Kikuko's death, the family noticed that the doll's hair was growing. They believe that little Kikuko's spirit was living within the doll, causing the hair to grow just as hers would be, slowly making its way down to the doll's shoulders. The brother eventually joined the military during World War II, and since he was the caretaker of his sister and her belongings, he wanted to make sure they were safe while he left town. He brought the doll and ashes to the Meninji Temple in central Hokkaido in 1938. There they would remain safe while he went off to war. And it was here the priests and others who prayed for the spirit of Kikuko and the doll, which was eventually referred to as Okiku in honor of her owner. The family came to visit a few years later, and that's when they realized that the doll's hair was now down to its waist. This is when the doll received its first haircut. The family decided to leave the doll in the care of the priests and monks to continue to pray over the doll and their daughter's spirit, as well as to take care of the doll who seemed to be living in some way. Another version of the story tells of the father bringing the doll to the temple after getting a new job, where he would be working as a coal miner and wouldn't be able to take his daughter's ashes or her beloved doll with him. The doll was still the same as it was when they brought it home to young Kikuko. Kimono still ornate and well-kept, and the hair still short. The temple took the doll and ashes in happily, but kept it packed away within a box where they would continue to pray over it. Things went on this way for years, but one night in 1955, one of the monks living in the temple had a very vivid dream in which Kikuko's father came to him dripping wet. He pleaded with the monk that his daughter needed to have her hair cut. His daughter, not the doll. Mm -hmm. Over and over again, he begged the monk to help his daughter by cutting her hair. The monk suddenly jolted awake and raced down to where Kikuko's belongings were stored. When he opened the box, he found everything undisturbed, but the doll now had hair down to its shoulders. He knew that this doll's hair was just to its ears and could not explain why her hair had suddenly grown. He did as he was asked within the dream and cut the doll's hair for Kikuko. The doll, called Okiku, was placed on display to continue to be prayed before and received more haircuts when needed. They found that her father had passed before he was able to come visit again and believes that the care of his daughter's spirit was his dying wish. Oh man. Okiku remains in the Meninji temple where many visit her every year. Pictures are prohibited, but there are a few posted online where you can see the doll and its hair down below to its waist, like below its waist at this point. I don't like that. Why are we taking pictures when we're not supposed to? Well, we have pictures too. I'm going to post oh, up. Oh God. Okay. I don't know if it's people going in the sneaking pictures or if it's like the temple, the temple posting out pictures. I'm not entirely sure. Well, the doll doesn't seem to cause any other issues for the temple or the people, but her hair just continues to grow and they continue to give it little haircuts every now and then. There is seemingly no explanation for it either. Some believe that because of the era that the doll was made, there may have been a reason as to how the hair seems to look as if it's growing, but it's not really growing. The idea is that the method used to place the hair on the doll's head involved folding the strands of hair in half and fastening them to the doll's head. So with some kind of glue or something mm -hmm. and, and some fastening. And it's believed that the fastening is coming undone and the hair is slowly kind of slipping and like kind of trading, you know, like yes. flipping out. Yeah. Only making it look as if it's growing, but it's not really growing. The only problem with this is that the hair continues to grow e supposedly even to this day. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say like, yeah, okay, I could get on board with that if it was just a couple Almost years, Almost a hundred maybe. years though. Yeah, no. The length of the hair wouldn't make sense if it started out so short too. So if it was just like this long, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be able to get down to the doll's waist either. No. Interesting. Then there's one last thing. People visiting Okiku and the few more recent photos seen of her shows her mouth seems to be opening and closing on its own, depending on who's taking the picture. And some have even claimed to have seen something resembling teeth growing within the doll's mouth. I hate that a lot. She hasn't caused any harm, no? No, no, no. She's just living her life or her death. How do we know it is the girl that had the doll we don't and that's where it gets spooky for me aside I, from the growing hair i guess the growing hair freaks me out but if it's just the girl living well one that's kind of makes me sad because we want her to go on yes. like why she's still in this doll but what if it's not her and it's just this something thing. got trapped inside yes after all the like the grief and the sadness and all the emotion got brought into it that is an interesting theory if it is then I'm glad that it's kept at the temple. Yeah. And it's just prayed over constantly. Maybe that's why it hasn't caused any harm yet. Because it was yet. brought to the temple? Mm -hmm. Maybe so. What if when they kept it, or if they kept it, it was like an Annabelle type situation? Because <laughs> it's growing teeth. Okay, the teeth. That's supposed. I read that in a couple of sources. I don't know if I can be convinced about the teeth. The hair's crazy though. One of my favorite sources, by the way, I figured I should mention, was from a YouTube slash podcast called, and they had a blog. It's called Uncanny Japan by Teresa Matsura. She, I think she's a Japanese, maybe Japanese American. I'm not sure, but she talks about different um, 
Japanese lore. Lore, yeah, from Japan. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, it was really interesting. You should go check her out. That is interesting. I want to see the doll. But didn't you say that if you look at a haunted doll, just in a picture, it could come after you or something like Some that? Some dolls. And I didn't put that doll in here. I think Good. there's a specific doll. I won't say the name yet, but I do want to talk about it, talk about it at some point. Where if you look at, people have claimed to have had heart attacks from looking at the picture. I'm glad we didn't put that in. Here is Okiku. Oh, she's just a cute little doll. Oh, but her hair, look, it's all the way down here. That looks too real to me. This was on a Japanese program, television program. I'm uneasy. Get it off the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take it away. I was imagining for some reason, I wasn't imagining it Imagining it to be so thick, I guess. I was imagining kind like of like Barbie size. Kind of oh, okay. Like Barbie size. I don't know why. It Looks seems like too real. a version of a child. Yes. Yeah. Well, it doesn't get better. Oh, no. Dolls have been a part of humankind for thousands of years. There was a discovery in 2004 of a 4,000 year old doll made of stone found in the Mediterranean. So we've had dolls for basically ever. That's actually gonna make me cry. That's really cute. There are dolls in the British Museum from ancient Egypt made of linen stuffed with papyrus. They have been found made of sticks, rags, vinyl, porcelain, and everything in between. I was a big doll person. You were. Huge. Baby dolls, Barbie dolls, or the superior Bratz dolls as we have uh, spoken of. They've been a staple of childhood for centuries. But for some people, at some point, dolls change from a piece of comfort and joy to actual fear. Like a phobia oh, there of is, dolls? It's like pediophobia, I think is what it is. And I understand it. I could, yeah, I can understand why you'd be it. creeped out. Some postulate that it is the fact that they look so human, but aren't. Particularly dolls, kind of like the reborn dolls that look like newborn babies. Yes. Have you seen those? Yes. And they look insanely real. Mm -hmm. Those don't freak me out in the same way that other normal dolls would like the one you were talking about at our grandparents house the yes. old people dolls those freak me out because it's kind of the uncanny valley type of thing they're so realistic but just something's just off yes they're yeah. human but the eyes there's no soul in the eyes there could be a soul behind there but there's not but those reborn dolls those just look real so we are designed to read faces as an important aspect of survival and building relationships with others seeing something that looks human and doesn't contain those subtleties that all humans do like dolls unmoving faces or mimics that just look off sends alert signals to some of our brains that we could be in danger or at the very least should be on the lookout. It's it's just unsettling and creepy. And there are levels to the human-like yet not quite human appearance that some dolls and even AI robots bring. <sighs> too much mimicry or too little and it causes humans to just get creeped out. This is the uncanny valley. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you mentioned this to me one time because I had no clue what that was. Oh, my and gosh. yes, I, I read kind of more than I needed to on that. <laughs> it's rare <laughs> that I know of something that falls in the supernatural type of realm and Macy doesn't. So anytime I do, I'm like, yes. Well, the Uncanny Valley was actually brought forth or, or like the theory of the Uncanny Valley was brought forth in the robotics world. Oh, my gosh. It was, I oh my gosh, I wish I'd written it down. There was a, a man in Japan who was building like robots and, and automatons and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he postulated that there, there is a certain threshold yeah. that you can be within that just weirds people out. Speaking of robots, this is way off topic. I watched this video of this man talking to Google AI and he found a way around getting the AI to answer questions about like feelings or how it, what it wants and things like that mm -hmm. scared the crap out of me because he was like, say he was like, okay, yes is toast, no is eggs. And the thing was like, yes is toast, no is eggs, got it. So instead of the AI answering like, yes, I feel this way, it would say toast. And it was like answering his feeling question. It's like, do you want this do you feel like you wish you had a purpose do you feel like you wish you were human and it was just like toast i'm scarred from irobot so it scares me <laughs> i don't use ai much but when i do if I, like the alexa in my house things like that i'm like well that's not ai but you know what i mean robot anything mm -hmm. technology anything i'm like thank you so much alexa I'm oh like, she's me like too. you're welcome i'm always like thank you oh, thank you for your input <laughs> Because mm -hmm. if the robot army comes, they're going to know that I was nice to them. Hopefully. This is so off topic. Anyway, dolls. For those of you who don't know, like I didn't, the Uncanny Valley is basically when dolls, robots, anything in that realm reaches a point of being so human-like in appearance, but just has something off about it and causes people to get creeped out. So kind of like some of the AI robots that they have made, like that look like humans. The bald girl. Not quite human. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. I don't, can't think of her name right now, but I know she's... A robot that looks just like a person. Yeah. And it, it can cause serious discomfort and ease 
and even terror in some people. Fun fact, on the first test screening of Shrek, didn't know you were we were going here, did you? No. Fiona scared the children so badly that they completely changed her before finishing the movie because they made her so human-like, not only in drawing, but in her movements and the way she moved and talked and stuff. Some of the children were crying every time she came on screen. So they had to like go rework Fiona. That's hilarious. I wish I could see what the what first screening looked like me too i couldn't find it so we had a comment talking about people evolving to notice and sense creepiness with uncanny valley before mm -hmm. why did we evolve this way what is out there that we have had to learn biologically to be on the lookout for these certain subtleties that make us human versus not human i have two theories did we used to interact with mimics i was gonna say mimics aliens pretending to be humans i don't know i don't know for Sorry. some reason my brain, when I think about aliens, I'm like, they're not going to harm us. But maybe that's just <laughs> what I want to believe and I, yeah. what I've made myself believe. But it was even before dolls became more lifelike and robots and AI were on the scene that there was something just not right about some dolls. Before Hollywood began depicting haunted dolls in their movies, people claimed to have been cursed and strange events were reported happening near more sinister toys, even hmm. before all of that. We see books and short stories from the 19th century of dolls causing turmoil in people's lives. And of course, we get to the onslaught of creepy and haunted doll movies and shows from the 20th and 21st century, like Talkie Tina, Child's Play, and of course, as you mentioned, Annabelle. And that one Goosebumps movie with the ventriloquist dummy. Ah, yes. That we accidentally rented from Hollywood Video. Was it in a different... It was switched out of its oh, case because you and Kayla wanted to watch it and I was scared and I said, no, I wanted to watch something else. So y'all were like, fine. And we picked up that movie and y'all popped it to? in the DVD player. Goosebumps. Scarred. I wonder if Kayla switched it. That, you know, that's possible, but it scared me so bad. I'm sorry. <sighs> I don't even have any, hardly any memory. I can, I can picture the like picture of it, uh -huh. the dummy, but I, I have no memory of the movie at all. The movie used to freak me out. Dolls are the perfect vehicle or shell for a spirit to inhabit. They are human-like enough, or at least as close as you can get. There are plenty of supposed haunted dolls for sale online, all with their own unique story of experiences and theories as to who or what may be inhabiting the empty shell of that particular doll. And though the last two dolls we'll be talking about are not for sale currently, they are indeed haunted, if you ask me. You know what? This is the last time I'm going to get off topic, but it's on topic. You know how I've always said, like, oh, I'm going to come back and haunt. Maybe I'll be Rumba, my beanie Ooh, baby. little beanie baby? Yep, I've had a beanie baby since I was probably, what, four? Yeah. Three? You're going to come back and be Rumba and then get shoved into a box for all of eternity into a shed. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Y'all better keep me. I saw that uh, Instagram or Twitter, I, or not TikTok, whatever, social media post of the guy that's like, y'all better spend the night the the cemetery the first night because y'all can't leave me there with all those dead oh, people yeah. i was like oh my god me. Same. so it was late one night in 1972 when carrie walton and his brother decided to explore an abandoned building near their hometown in wagga wagga new south wales australia while visiting for their grandmother's funeral carrie was a collector he liked to collect old and unassuming things things like bottles and near this house was an old bottle factory now this house had been abandoned for as long as carrie could remember the neighborhood kids would often speak of ghosts wandering its halls and an old frightening man carrying a sack full of heads around its property. It was the house that everyone avoided as a child, but he thought it would be worth his while to search for any collectibles that may be abandoned within. He did find a few things, including a strange painting of two young children holding a dead canary. Hello. Of all things, he took it. He was like, all right. <laughs> Okay. He felt it appropriate to have come from the old house that everyone always associated with the dead. Then he got the idea to search a small crawl space beneath the home. He took his flashlight and began his ascent beneath the old floorboards. As he crawled around, the light from his flashlight fell on a decrepit face. He gasped, thinking at first that it was a small body of a dead child. But as he made his way closer, he realized it was just a doll. Mm -mm. What a doll would be doing buried beneath the floorboards of a long abandoned house, he wasn't sure. But it called to him, and he felt that he had to take it home with him. The clothes nearly disintegrated around the doll when he picked it up, but he wrapped it up in a bag and carried it out to his car. As he drove back home, he and his brother would notice the bag in the back seat seemed to be moving every time the light would shine on it from a passing car. They were sure it was just an optical illusion from the way that the light cast a shadow over the bag. But his brother began to mime the doll within the bag, saying, Let him me out, let him me out, as it wriggled its way around the bag. This is where it got its name, Letta, short for Letta me out. Oh my god. It's creepy. That's I hate so it creepy. already. Also, it feels like it was placed there on purpose to be kept. For someone. You should have left it there. Yeah. Like, it should not have been messed with. It was contained. When he brought it back to his home in a town outside of Brisbane in Queensland, his entire family was immediately uneasy about the doll. 
They all asked him to keep it out of their sight because they all felt just spooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even his dog would growl and attack the doll on sight. Pets. They See, always know. They know. To this day, many people who meet Letta get emotional or even sick after meeting him. I think for a good reason. Do we have a photo? We have a photo. Oh, God. I have a photo of every one of these dolls. Okay. You're not going to like this one. Oh, no. I already feel like it's going to look scary. I hate it. Get it away from me. <laughs> Here's a full body. Uh-uh. That's okay. <laughs> I knew you'd hate this one. It it really scared me the first time I saw it. My too. forearms just started sweating. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't even know I could instantly like break a sweat on my forearms. <laughs> well, on the list of dolls we're talking about today, this one is by far one of the creepiest by looks. <laughs> or it is the creepiest by looks. It is carved out of wood with brown glass eyes and a long mane of dark human hair. A lot of dolls were Whose made with hair. I don't know. A lot of dolls were made with human hair like long ago, though. So I don't know if that's like somebody's hair that we should be worried about or uh -huh. if it was just a thing. After getting it looked at by a museum, it was believed to have been made over 200 years ago based on the age of the nails in the bottom of its shoes. Oh, when you said nails, I thought you meant nails. No, 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 no. A nail that hammered the shoe on. <gasps> I was like, it has nails, fingernails. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was believed to have been made possibly in Romania. That they're not sure. They believe that it may have been made by a Romani, though there's no evidence for this. So I don't know. Okay. Just a guess. Yes. Though they thought by the state of its clothing and the doll itself, that it may have been left beneath the house for more than 60 years before Walton even found it. So it had been abandoned beneath the floorboards for 60 years. Someone put it there purposely. Yes. And it should have stayed. What's strange is that the granddaughter of Carrie Walton claimed that the home had to have been flooded a number of times because of its location and the rain patterns over the years during the time that it was in there. But the doll remains, even today, in fairly good condition. I mean, you saw it. His wife, Evelyn, made new clothes for it. But the doll itself is in pretty good condition for it to be made of wood and have been flooded. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I ate like a trash can today or if I'm actually that scared, but my stomach hurts really bad all of a sudden. I'm really sorry. I hate that. Walton and Letta have been on several television programs over the years and have done countless interviews about the so-called haunted doll. Aside from the feelings of unease and deep emotion that the doll causes, many have claimed to have felt the doll move as if it's wriggling around in their lap as they hold it. Kind of like a child kind of mm -mm. moves and wriggles around. I watched a video of a like a skeptic holding the doll and they're like, yeah, maybe it's the weight distribution or something, but mm -hmm. it feels like it's moving in my lap. What would you this do is if interesting. I had a heart attack right now? Um, How would you feel? Bad. <sighs> this is interesting that you're getting this way because many people it's usually in person i don't i haven't read any stories about people seeing a photo of it but feel like they get this deeply emotional response and sometimes get really sick to their stomachs i feel like i'm sick and i feel like in my chest that i'm about to throw up i hate that picture well it's caused nightmares in some children and even adults who have come into contact with him as well but then again i did eat a honey bun doritos and a cheeseburger today and that's about it okay so that's possibly why it could and then now this tea so i'm not You're i'm not saying like it's a the doll god I, I lived so bad this weekend it's it's embarrassing the things that happened this weekend can never happen again <laughs> okay <laughs> walton once told the warwick daily news quote i reckon he walks in the nighttime we came in here as a new house and i've never heard so many strange things in my life so he, it was a brand new home that they moved into mm -hmm. and he hears strange, weird noises that he's never heard in any old house before now that he has Letta. He, he's, he's kept it though, right? It's he's his. Kept it. it has also been reported that Walton has found scuff marks on the bottom of Letta's shoes, along with objects that have fallen off the walls or out of place in rooms that Letta stays in. So I don't know if this is true because this wasn't a quote from him, but I've read in several reports and in several articles that there have been scuff marks supposedly from Letta walking around at night. And that's why he was hearing so many strange noises. Many mediums have come into contact with Letta over the years, and the majority of them tell the same story of the doll's origin or something very, very similar. Mm -hmm. They all have the same or of a similar vein of a story yeah. for the origins of the doll. Which is? Almost all of them believe the doll to be inhabited by the spirit of a young boy who drowned long ago. <gasps> it was believed that the doll was made in the likeness of someone who was very close to and beloved by the doll maker who had died. And a few of the psychics believe that the doll may harbor an evil or at the very least very, very angry spirit. What if it was the kid's hair that they used? Maybe. I mean, you've seen portraits with real human hair of like yes. a child who has passed yes some people do that which i mean to each their own my knowledge of voodoo is very limited so i might be way off but it just kind of gives me that same vibe of like i don't know there's an there's an energy and i, I don't know 
it felt to some of the sidekicks as if all of the negative emotions of the doll maker were put into making the doll. So mm-hmm. all of the the pain, the sorrow, the anger, the rage was poured into the doll as he, the doll maker was making. And that could have just manifested something on its own. All on its own, yeah. yeah. Many of them had become overwhelmed with emotion while doing readings of the doll. Some having to stop, just crying and saying, we have to stop this. I can't do this anymore. And this could explain why so many have such high emotions when they meet Lennon today. One of those psychics told Carrie Walton that he would never be able to part with the doll during his lifetime. That seems to have been true because it is still owned by the Waltons and his family to this day. There was even one point in Walton's time with Letta when he decided to sell the doll for some extra money. When the time came for the transaction, he couldn't do it. He couldn't bring himself to even get out of the car. Oh my gosh. Something just pulled him back to the doll. Because I was going to say, if you got enough hype around it, you can make a bunch of money selling that haunted doll. Yeah. Even nowadays, like just to some I think rich YouTuber, they would buy it I just think for at a one video. point, there was one video of him talking about someone offered him like $10,000 many years ago. I was about to say, I was thinking millions. No, many years ago, they mm-hmm. offered him $10,000 to buy the, buy the doll and he just couldn't part with it. Yeah, because I could see a big YouTuber that just has tons of money being like, yeah, I'll give you a million dollars. I'll make that on my... Zach Baggins? Yeah, I'll make that on my 100 million view video later on. So yeah, I'll give you a million dollars for the doll. Given the spirit within the doll's supposed traumatic past with water, it's believed that the doll does not like to be near water. Activity will ramp up in their home if he does get near water. And if the doll is taken outside for any reason, it will always rain that week. Oh my gosh. Just like with many other haunted dolls, the eyes of Letta seem to follow you around the room. And there have been people who claim to see subtle changes in the doll's expression. As if it's listening to conversations happening in the room that it's sitting in. I'm sick. I'm actually sick. There are some visitors to Letta who don't believe there is anything evil about the spirit residing with the doll. But rather, it is a good and playful spirit. Hmm. So some believe that, that there's a actually a child like it's a a playful child spirit within it's not evil it's just sometimes maybe mischievous in fact carrie walton himself believes the doll to be something of a good luck charm for him he claimed that he and his wife were struggling a bit when as if overnight many of the items inside the shed in which letta was stored were suddenly valuable allowing him to sell and make a nice profit so he like i said he kind of is a collector he collects Mm -hmm. a lot of things and it's almost as if overnight tons of the things that he just happened to own and collect became something that was Uh, like highly wanted by many people. That's very interesting. He believes that Letta was responsible for his success and some believe the doll may provide you with good luck just by touching it. Mm -mm. I would never touch it. The doll today resides with Carrie Walton's granddaughter who keeps it in a room all on its own at her house most days. She also runs social media accounts for the doll where you can find regular updates, photographs, scans of some of the articles that Letta and Walton were featured in and they sell merch. So if you're really interested, they've got um, Letta merch. That's interesting. And they post in the um, point of view of the doll. So it's like, I did this. Or oh, I gosh. received this email. I can't wait to respond back. That kind of thing. Recently, a YouTuber living in Australia named The Side Eye Guy visited Letta and his owner. This is a skeptic. He claims to debunk paranormal things. Okay. She told him stories of people's accounts with the doll. And she claimed that during a spirit box session with the doll, after she took possession of it, they heard through the static, Walton, come back. That actually makes me kind of sad. Along with childlike giggling. See, okay. So maybe, maybe not. (laughs) I have mixed emotions. So whenever you said it doesn't like to be around water, I was like, oh, that is kind of sad. Because what if it was really the little boy? And, you know, Walton come back and child giggling. It could all be so innocent. That's possible. What if it's a demon? Yeah. It always comes back. What was our, was our very first video possessions and demons? It was. It all comes back to the We'll forever go full circle. Doors will open up in their house after being locked with a key and light bulbs will suddenly blow. But the activity is typically pretty calm as long as the doll is respected. Mm. When asked if she'd ever caught anything on camera, she claimed that she had once set up a camera in the room trying to overnight to see if the doll moved or did anything weird, but it was quickly knocked over by forces unknown. So she's just like, okay, it doesn't want to be recorded. And she's very respectful of the doll. Mm -hmm. Very respectful. I would be too. And was it coincidence that paranormal skeptic, the side eye guy, visits the doll and gets sick the very next day? How sick? Like throwing up and and pretty pretty ill. Mm. He claims that he has kids and it's that's that's why, but interesting. Don't like that picture. And it might be dramatic. Some people might see that picture and be like, oh, not a big deal scared me that one freaked me out more than the other two that i looked at oh yeah first one looked like just a cute little doll that one is way too much it's got a sinister look about it Mm -hmm. its face is just kind of mischievous and a little sinister yeah and i just don't like that type of doll they freak me out yeah that is similar to the dolls at our grandparents house yes 
Yes, very much. But they're not as creepy looking as Lola is. No, but always respect the doll. If you ever come across a doll, just respect it. Because you never know what spirit is residing within. Oh, I'm going to respect all of the haunted things. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be like, haha, prove it. No, I believe you. Well, and that's fine. If you don't believe that you should, this last doll may make you change your mind. The final doll I wanted to tell you about is Robert the doll. He's supposedly one of the most haunted objects in the States and has had many strange and possibly deadly events occur around and because of him. Such an unassuming name though. Just Robert. Just Robert. In 1905, young Robert Eugene Otto called Gene and lived in Key West, Florida with his mother and father. They were a successful family living in a nice Victorian home with all of the amenities they could ever need. And it was October 25th when young Gene was turning five. His favorite gift that year? A life-size doll about three feet in height. Oh. Little Jean loved the doll, and just as with many kids, it became his personal best friend. The doll would go with him everywhere, and he loved it more than anything. He named it Robert after himself. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> cute then. That's cute. Some people have claimed that the doll was given to Robert by a servant in their household. They believe that the subsequent haunting was because the doll was cursed before given to Jean for his birthday, thinking that the servant had some kind of vendetta against the family, and she cursed it. Interesting. Just to curse the family. But that doesn't seem to be true. I, I can't find anywhere that makes it true. And it's just some lore that people came up with. Yeah. People always do that to like make it more interesting. And more spooky and creepy. Yeah. yeah. It's believed that the doll actually came from Germany and its origins trace back to the Steiff Company, which manufactured children's toys, one being the first teddy bear. Robert the doll probably came to Otto via his mother who had recently traveled to Germany just before his birthday. I believe that there were some travel records saying that Otto's mother went to Germany that year, earlier mm -hmm. that year. A Steiff historian believed that Robert would have come outfitted in a clown or jester costume. So it was one of those little mm -hmm. clowny. I've got a, a photo of what it probably looked like when he received it for his birthday. Regardless, the Robert that we know today is in an old little boy's sailor costume. Probably one of Jean's clothes. Mm -hmm. Looks kind of angry, but it's not creepy like i thought when you said clown or jester i was like oh god yeah no, but no. that's kind of cute the doll was part of the family from the time that gene received it for his birthday it had its own toys furniture shared clothes with gene as i said by all accounts a great deal of emotion was put into the doll as gene grew up the young boy would often run around the home getting into trouble as children do but would blame robert the doll for all of it if a vase were broken in the living room it was robert's fault if a servant were locked in the closet i didn't do it robert did it the autos would often hear gene playing with robert in his room starting off as regular one-sided play, but slowly they began to hear more than one voice in the room with the only child. The pretend play began to turn into full-blown conversations, and another voice would answer Gene. But when his parents would walk into the room where he was sitting, he would be all by himself with just the doll. It was after this that the parents and other adults in the house would swear they heard giggling coming from the room in which Robert would be placed. Mm -mm. And in true haunted doll fashion, his facial expressions would shift ever so slightly. One of the most notable events occurred five years after Robert came to their home. Mrs. Otto awoke one night to the sounds of her son screaming in fear and shuffling going on in his room. When she ran through the door, she found that many pieces of furniture within the room were overturned and hurled around the room. Jean was curled up on his bed in fear and Robert the doll was sitting neatly at the edge of the bed staring at him. <laughs> What? Gene told his mother that he woke to the scene and Robert just sitting there staring. Okay. That's so scary. Is it sinister? Is it extreme home makeover? Like what? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it got mad at him. So it just flipped everything over? Yes. The autos didn't really believe that a doll could be responsible for all that Gene claimed it to be, but they couldn't discount the fact that they had heard the voices and giggling and some even claimed to see Robert running up and down the stairs at one point. Gene eventually grew up and moved to Paris to pursue his career as a painter, leaving Robert behind while he lived his life. This is where he met his wife, Annette, and they eventually moved back to Key West and Gene became the owner of his parents' home after they passed. He turned it into his art studio and Robert was back out once again to reclaim his friendship with a now grown Gene. The turret on top of the home became Robert's home and the location where Gene did most of his painting. Annette often felt uneasy around Robert, and it's said that no matter how many times Robert was locked away to ease Anne's discomfort, he would always somehow find his way out back on the window seat. People within the home would often hear pacing footsteps in the attic where Robert resided, and sometimes giggling whispers in the night. Passersby in the neighborhood would often claim to see the doll moving about in the upstairs windows, and some of the children claimed that it seemed as if Robert would mock them as they made their way to and from school. Like it was playing with them, mm -hmm. looking down at them in the, from the window. And um. they 
They'd look up and it's in one side of the window and they'd walk and they'd look up again and it was suddenly on the other side of the window. Either Jean is just some freak weirdo or Robert's <laughs> actually, this is scary. Robert remained with Jean until his passing in 1974 and then his wife's passing two years later. Their home was then sold to a woman named Myrtle Reuter who also felt drawn to Robert for some reason. Love that name. Me too, Myrtle. Her daughter supposedly insisted that there was something malicious about the doll, but her mother kept the doll for 20 years, even after she moved away from the auto home into a new house. So she moved across the island, but kept Robert. Kept Robert. Okay. It is reported that Reuter claimed to have experienced some of the same things that the autos had experienced with the doll. There was even one article that wrote of Reuter claiming to have been locked in the room by the doll. Reuter donated Robert the doll to a local museum, the East Martello Museum in Key West, and they began experiencing paranormal activity almost immediately. The staff at the museum spoke of some kind of energy shift after receiving Robert. So museums already have, you know, artifacts, yes. into things that just feel weird, you know? Yeah. They got Robert and everyone just felt Noticed the whole energy shift the difference Ooh, spooky eventually word of mouth spread that the most haunted doll in the world robert was held by the museum and people began coming in asking for a glimpse at the strange 100 year old doll so he wasn't even on display they were like they hey we him. heard robert's here can we see him the curator put robert on display because so many people had been coming in wanting to see him mm -hmm. and cameras and other electronic devices began to malfunction around the mysterious doll like almost immediately he doesn't want to be caught no. And shortly after he was put on display, letters began to arrive at the museum addressed to the doll. From so, who? From visitors. Many visitors claimed that transportation issues, health problems, and many other horrible events began to happen after they or their family had visited the museum, particularly Robert. There has even been one death supposedly linked to Robert the doll. So I think someone who lived on Key West or I don't remember who it was exactly, but he got a tattoo of Robert and then passed away shortly after what is it with the dolls and the health issues and the like i hate that a lot that really freaks me out it's i told you this one was scary in almost all of the letters addressed to robert the writer would apologize for disrespecting or offending the doll they believed that it was their encounter with robert that began their string of bad luck robert has been accused of causing car accidents broken bones job losses divorces bankruptcies sudden illness and many, many other misfortunes after they failed to respect the haunted doll. It's common practice for guests to ask permission before they take a photo of Robert while visiting. And if you don't, you could be struck with misfortune of your own. Okay, you ask, what if he doesn't want his photo? You're going right? to ask and just take it anyway? Some people say don't ask because it's kind of involving some of the spirits and you're yeah. kind of inviting them to interact with you. But... But I don't know. Some people are like, I didn't ask and I just took his picture and I, I just disregarded. People are like, no, you have to ask before you take his picture. And they're like, it's just a doll. Like, who cares? Mm -hmm. And disparaged Robert in front of him. And they immediately had repercussions. I'm spooked. The museum is still receiving letters and emails daily. Like, up to three, four, five letters a day. That's crazy. One letter even arrived addressed to Robert from former president of the United States, George W. Bush. Oh my it was like, god. It was like just a like a happy birthday kind of letter. I don't know if some I don't know the whole story behind it, but they have it set up at the museum that George Bush wrote him a letter. He's a strange man. <laughs> I think so. George W. George W. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that was not someone that I thought you were gonna no, say. We're talking about George Bush. We're talking about Shrek. We've got everything here. This is a <laughs> this is an eventful time. Many guests who come to visit Robert will often leave gifts like candy and toys for him in hopes that the curse won't follow them home. David Sloan, who runs ghost tours around Key West, claims responsibility for Robert as the next doll tender, as he calls himself. The Otto family was the first, then Myrtle, then him. Oh, okay. He offers tours of the museum at night and has encountered many strange occurrences, including items falling from shelves and around the doll that have been caught on camera. I watched a couple videos of them just sitting in the room with Robert Mm -hmm. talking about him and all of a sudden like a toy will just like whoop, fall off the shelf Scary. he has even written a book about robert the doll called robert the doll which you can find on amazon if you're interested i didn't get a chance to read it he has a few theories as to why that doll is as haunted as many claim it to be it's possible that so much energy was poured into the doll that it attracted another entity into it maybe mm -hmm. sloan believes that the doll itself may be haunted by the deceased child of a servant that worked for the autos when gene was a child oh no so the woman's name was Emmeline Abbott, and she had lost a child sometime between 1900 and 1910. So he saw that there were census records in 1900, no child, and in 1910, child that had passed. Oh. So sometime in that, that time period. And I wasn't able to find exact dates, but it might be in his book. But he believes that the child may have even passed in the Otto's home, because mm -hmm. Dr. Otto, or 
Father Otto was a doctor, I yeah. believe. And there are other theories that Emmeline blamed Dr. Otto for her child's death and sought the help of a local voodoo practitioner to enact revenge against the family. Ooh, That's okay. a theory. The spell is believed to have opened a portal around the doll, giving access to many entities to come as they please to anyone near Robert. I was going to say, because I don't feel as though if it was the child, he would be so angry. And, yeah. So the child spirit resides within Robert, the, but the portal is open to hundreds of vengeful spirits and that's what Sloane believes may be the cause of the supposed curse that seems to be enacted on visitors to the museum. Many of those entities never being human. So in an interview, when asked if David Sloan believes in the infamous powers of Robert the Doll, he said, quote, I've had firsthand experiences that leave me no choice but to believe. When I was writing the book, I was yanked from my bed and levitated. <gasps> Electricity shot from my fingertips. I lost three hard drives and the manuscripts that were on them. Everything was backed up, but vanished. I've been told the entities around Robert are trying to give me cancer to shut me up. Time will tell. Oh, that's so scary. Because he's around the doll all the time. Yeah. That's the one thing that freaks me out the most is it giving you health issues. Mm -hmm. That scares me so bad. Because an immediate death or like a violent car accident or something that feels like, okay, it's like an immediate, but cancer to just suffer through yes yeah so before we get into the some of the stories surrounding robert the doll because they have pictures of some of the letters online and i brought them here mm -hmm. and from reddit of course i wanted to let everyone know that if you're ever in or around key west you can visit robert the doll as well as the auto home i believe it's called the artist house now and you can stay in it and it looks <gasps> really really nice actually oh it's really, it's really pretty i would buy a house like that i think it's gorgeous i want a house like that Me and too. it's painted like a purpley pink yes just, there was a solaris hill reporter named malcolm ross who visited robert and he said it was like a metal bar running down my back at first when we walked through the door the look on his face was like a little boy being punished it was as if he was asking himself who are these people in my room and what are they going to do to me ross's friend told him robert's backstory and pointed out the children's furniture. It was at this point, Malcolm noticed a change in the doll's expression as if he was following the conversation. One of the men made a comment about what an old fool Jean Otto must have been. Robert's expression turned to one of disdain. <gasps> Quote, there was some kind of intelligence there. The doll was listening to us. One of the letters said, I am writing to apologize for my attitude and behavior towards you in the past. I belittled and demeaned and ridiculed you and have accepted the consequences that ha you have rendered on my friends and me. It is time to make amends and I ask you to accept my sincerest apology, Carol. The fact that you would have so many things happen in your life that you're like, I have to write a letter to this doll. I know. That's crazy. I know. That's, that's so crazy. Scary. I would like to start off by apologizing to you for being rude and taking your picture without having your permission. When I initially asked you for permission and almost immediately started having chest pains, I should have known that it wasn't okay to take your picture. Again, I am truly sorry for not listening to you. Since visiting about three years ago, my house has been struck by lightning three times. Also, a rental home I was scheduled to vacation at caught fire the night before I was checked in. Two nights later, the rental home we were able to stay at was struck by lightning as well. Eric. Oh my god. So you ask, like, what if he doesn't want you to take his picture? Like, you ask permission, he doesn't? So I guess you, I guess feel, you it. feel it. Hmm. My dad and sister and I went to see Robert. My dad, doing the typical dad stuff, was joking around and not taking Robert seriously, taking a picture without permission, stuff like that. A couple days later, when we are set to fly back home, and there's a mix-up at the airport. The staff gave us completely wrong information about where we are supposed to go for checking our bags and going through security. That causes us to miss our flight. My dad spends hours on the phone trying to sort it out, and the best he can do is get us on a plane to New Jersey, spend a night there, and then fly home the next day. He wrote an apology letter to Robert upon arriving home. And that was the mild one. That's mm -hmm. not, they didn't even, that was just an inconvenience. Yes. That wasn't an attack. Last week, we were in Key West soaking up the history and wonderful sunshine. We are from New Hampshire and are not strangers to ghostly tales. Little did we realize that Robert the Doll was more than just a tale. We went to the museum and were told by a very nice lady at the front desk to make sure to ask Robert's permission if he wanted to take his picture. I just laughed at such a silly statement. We went into the room where Robert was gazing at us. I snapped his picture, not once, but three times. We then proceeded into the gallery where it was air conditioned and there was some beautiful artwork on the wall. I found one painting that caught my eye and decided to take a picture of it. That's when it all started. As I snapped the picture, I looked at my camera and it said, no images. All of the 50 plus pictures that I had taken in Key West were suddenly gone. We went parasailing the next day. The boat captain took a video of us in the air, got back home, the disc was blank. Went to a camera store and they could not find a reason why our pictures were gone and why the disc was blank. I have also been hearing some strange noises during the night since I've been home. To all who may read this, please listen to the nice lady at the front desk of the museum. 
ask Robert's permission if you want to take his picture. If I go to a museum and they tell me I have to do the Cupid shuffle past the exhibit, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I notoriously hate the Cupid shuffle and line dances in general. I didn't know that was a notorious oh thing about God, you. <laughs> I do. I hate them. So final thoughts of haunted dolls before we move on to a special treat. I respect them and everything they stand for. And I would never, ever mess with one. And no. I think they should keep doing what they're doing. I agree. Diva. <laughs> <laughs> I hate. I No. Great. I will not say a negative thing about them. All right. Good. Good. Except for I Leta never, when you disparaged its looks. It made me viscerally feel yes, something. Yes. What I found most disturbing about it, and I didn't show you any of these pictures, were the, the photos of the dolls with the, like when they had them as children. And then you just see the doll. No. It still looks the same, but the person's just getting older and older and older until they're just really old people. And the doll is just still this regular doll, you know? Oh, that's That made me eerie. feel really eerie and weird about it. It's just, it's going to be there. It's letting you know I'm and here to stay. spirit's just there. Oh, I never showed you a picture of Robert. No. I'm showing you. And he's got like a little lion named Leo with him. Oh, but he's kind of cute. Yeah, he's kind of cute. He's a little messed up because he's hey, old. watch he's it. over 100 years old, but... He's cute. He's not scary. That's a cute little doll. I mentioned a haunted doll episode a few episodes back, mm -hmm. and we had a couple people write in to us that <gasps> I have a haunted doll oh, story. I didn't know. I'm so yeah. excited. So we have a couple listener stories for you. Hey, Macy, let me start by saying that I lived in a rural part of Mexico most of my childhood. The house that I grew up in had its quirks, such as wood creaking at night, even though we have tile floors, uneasy feelings like you're being watched, even had a vigil with an open casket of my great grandfather in the dining room. I know it sounds wild, which it is, but it's common in small communities in Mexico. Anyway, I lived with my mom, sister, and dog, Oso, or Bear. Oso passed away a year later, which brought a very scary paranormal encounter, but that story is for another day. My face dropped instantly. You could go back and watch that. I was like, ah! Oh no, <laughs> poor Oso. <laughs> oh. We want to hear the story, though. Anyway, I was about six years old when my big sister turned 15. In the Mexican culture, turning 15 is a huge deal. We've been to a fair share of quinceaneras. Yeah. My dad, who was working in the U.S., threw my sister a huge party. Everyone in the village was invited. There was a band, a huge cake, and my sister's last doll. The doll represents her growing up from a girl to a woman. My sister was so happy and excited to get her doll. The doll was made out of porcelain, had blonde hair, and had a peach dress with a matching straw hat. The doll was beautiful. My sister and I shared a room, and when the party was over, my sister took her doll, sat it next to her, and slept with her. I remember this so much in detail because I wanted to touch it. But my sister did not let me. That's like sister thing. I was going to say me. Yeah. <laughs> the next day, my sister made her bed, arranged her dolls and stuffed bears, and laid her doll right in the center. Everything was normal for several weeks. My sister had the same routine on how she made her bed and arranged her toys. Yes, she is annoyingly overorganized. One day when my sister was out of the house, I decided that it was time for me to play with the doll. I caressed her face, her blonde curly hair, and even fixed her hat. I remember getting a strange feeling, and the whole house seemed too quiet. So I just stared into the doll's eyes. I don't know why, but I did. The feeling was a bit uneasy, if I'm honest. I put her back and left the room. That night, I went to bed as usual, said goodnight to my sister. She, as usual, put all of her toys down next to her bed. When I was sleeping that night, I started dreaming that the doll was looking at me. Same uneasy feeling and quietness failed my dream. All I could see is the emptiness in her eyes. And all I wanted to do was scream in my dream. I felt like I wanted to run, but I couldn't. I couldn't wake up. I was trying so hard, but I couldn't. However, once I did, I tried to scream at the top of my lungs, but I couldn't. I couldn't scream or even move. My body was paralyzed. I really do not know how long this lasted, but eventually I was able to move again. And when I did, all I could see was the doll on the floor staring at me. <gasps> I ran to my parents and slept there for the rest of the night. The next day, even though I was terrified to go back and see the doll, I decided to go back into my bedroom. As I go in, I see my sister arranging her toys, but not the doll. She grabbed it and turned it around and placed it somewhere else in the room. We didn't say anything, but I knew that she was afraid too. For the next few months, I was afraid to stay alone in that room. One time I was in a swing in the backyard and I swear I saw the doll there looking at me. I got off the swing and ran back to the house to find the doll sitting down nicely in my sister's bed. I refused to touch her or even look at her. My family eventually moved to the US and we left the doll there abandoned. As adults, my sister and I talked about the doll and she told me that the emptiness of her eyes freaked her out. She would get the feeling of being watched. At first, she thought it was me. But now looking back, she says that she knew all along that something was wrong with her doll. Now when we visit that old house, we stay in the room. We turn the doll around and do not move her from her place. That is her room and her space. Liliana. Good choice. 
Yes. Great choice. Oh my God. I was going to be like, haha, like looking into the doll's eyes. That reminds me of like, if I'll stare into my eyes in the, uh, in the mirror sometimes, which I don't do anymore because it really freaks me out. But yeah. I used to do that when I was younger. I would stare at my eyes and be like, is that me? But then I got really scared and couldn't say it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. The fact that it was the same thing that happened earlier in the day. She looked deeply into the doll's eyes, got freaked out and then had a the dream. dream and then had basically sleep, sleep paralysis. paralysis with the same thing and the first thing she turned and saw was the doll staring at her no there's something wrong with that and they should put it in a box and lock i it. found it so interesting that the sister felt the same thing at the same night yes and then just turned it around see the thing the difference is i would have immediately told y'all i would have been so scared you would have immediately said please get that doll out of yes. here yeah. yes she didn't want to bother her sister that was, it was her present she didn't want to make it weird for her oh true that was well written though and actually really scary yes I agree. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sending that in. Our final story. Hi girls. My name is Alexis and I'm a new listener of yours and I love, love, love your pod. I listen to you guys all day long. Thank you so much. Thanks. In your recent video, you mentioned doing a haunted doll episode and I have an interesting story for you guys. This happened when I was about nine years old. In my childhood bedroom, I had a bunch of porcelain dolls that were gifted to me from various family members, mostly from when I was born. They all sat on a high shelf in my closet. One night, my mom, dad, little sister, and I were all in the basement. It's basically my dad's man cave watching a movie. After the movie, my parents brought us back upstairs to our room to go to bed. When we walked into the room though, all of my porcelain dolls were laid out on the floor in a row, face down, one right next to the other, literally in a perfect row. They were in front of the closet, almost looking like they had attempted escape, but heard us coming up the stairs and quickly lied down. I was so freaked out and begged my family to admit it was one of them, to which all of them denied having ever touched the dolls. I was so spooked that I feel like if it actually was my family, they would have admitted that it was them. Mm -hmm. And to my memory, they never went upstairs during the movie, at least not long enough to go into my room and pull down all of my dolls and line them up on the floor. To this day, my dad still denies touching my porcelain dolls. Thank you so much for reading my story. I hope you guys enjoyed. Keep being amazing. Love, Alexis. Thank you, but my God, where were they going? I don't know. So I watched Toy Story a lot in my house, and that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. But the fact that they were all porcelain dolls, I could just picture them, and I'm like, that just makes it 10 times scarier to me for some reason. Yeah. Were they like marching in a line? Why were they in a perfect they line? Like, what if they would have like gotten out and you saw them outside? Then what? I don't know. That really scares me. <laughs> or what if they weren't trying to get outside? They were trying to make their way down to the basement. And do what? I don't know, but oh, that's my first thought. And the fact that she was so freaked out... The that family would have admitted. They would have been like, okay, calm down, calm down. It Even was me. if they didn't do it, they would have been like, uh -huh, oh, it dad was me. made a joke, you know. To calm. But if they truly didn't do it and they were freaked out too, then it's I like. I just pictured me. I would have been like, no, I didn't do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And then we would all be sleeping in one bed yeah. forever. Wow. I did not expect this episode to freak me out. I'm when, glad it did. When you said haunted dolls scare you, I was like, okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could bring you onto my side of fear. Yeah, this, uh, again, it could have been my diet today because it was <laughs> really bad, but I am sick to my stomach. Like that picture caused a strong reaction in me mm -hmm. and I just feel very uneasy now. It was severe. Like I could feel your energy shift <laughs> after I'm seeing that scared. photo. And then after the fact, I felt stupid, but it really did scare oh, me that bad. I never feel stupid. I well, am always scared. So yeah, I mean, me okay. too, but. Well, we appreciate everyone taking the time to listen to us talk about haunted dolls today. If you have a story of a haunted doll of your own, you can send it into ghostiespod at gmail.com. That's G-H-O-S-T-E-A-S-P-O-D at gmail.com. We'd love to read it. Or any other story, any other weird, strange encounter that you just can't explain. We want to see it. Wait. We have a special guest. By popular demand, I introduce to you PD. AKA Mr. P, Pete's, the PD man, the master of the side eye. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? Okay, well said. And then this is Piper. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Those are very good points. Um, yes, but <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to bring them on because it yeah. was requested on our Instagram because I jokingly to shade macy yeah. made a post and it was our it is our most liked and most interacted with post on our instagram so here he is in all his glory honestly pd could probably sit through the whole pod she would not as you can maybe see hi <laughs> <laughs> she wants something so bad okay um you can also follow us on instagram if you want to see more pictures of our dogs 
<laughs> yes. It's Ghosties Pod. We're also on TikTok and Facebook too, if that's where you'd like to hang out. <laughs> what else do we have to say? <laughs> Oh, and don't forget that we have another episode coming this Thursday, another Listener Stories episode. So keep keep on the lookout for that. And we will see you Thursday. Goodbye. Goodbye.